Hello friends, this is Worm, and today I wanted to talk about my biggest concerns with the upcoming sandbox changes to Destiny 2, because we just made a video talking about it yesterday, and we talked a little bit about some of the concerns I had, but I wanted to go in depth with these, and I wanted to take, you know, 24 hours basically to just think over everything that could possibly go wrong, and everything that does potentially worry me about the upcoming changes to the sandbox here. So I've got a list on my screen here, and these are no particular order, but let's go ahead and get started. The first concern I have is something that we saw a lot in Checkmate, and that is death balling. For those of y'all who don't know what death balling is, it's basically where either your team or the enemy team groups together and runs the around the map as a tightly knit group of individuals. This is frustrating because number one, as a player, if my team is death balling, I don't always want to be with my team. I have certain builds that maybe, you know, allow for flanking. I have certain you know, uh, ideas about the game. I generally, genu generally just want to win the game and my team doesn't have that same goal in mind. And so if my team is all running together and I'm running off by myself, like it's putting me at risk because now the enemy team could potentially be doing the same thing. And in many cases they are doing the same thing. And it's, it's something death balling. It, it has the potential to happen in any game, right? Any game mode, even regular crucible, you could go in there right now and potentially run across a death ball but when you get these checkmate rules into the mix it makes death balling just kind of a more natural occurrence and you have players who are playing solo or in duos all of a sudden kind of following each other around the map when in normal game modes like, you know in normal crucible without these with the uh, without these new sandbox changes and stuff like that you wouldn't really have that and death balling of course is frustrating in the game because Number one of two things happens. Number one, you're running around the map and when you encounter enemy players, there is two or three more enemy players right there to help kill you. Or you're running around the map and you can't find anybody because the enemy team is in a ball somewhere else in the map. And so it leads to really boring gameplays and it forces you to run around with your own teammates. So you have little tiny skirmishes around the map. You know, you have three V threes, 4v4s stuff around the map and then you have your other players that are running around just kind of looking for kills and stuff like that like it doesn't really produce a good flow and that's one of the concerns that i have with the upcoming sandbox changes because this like i said this is exactly what happened back when we had uh checkmate in the game and so i am concerned for death balling but moving on from there i want to talk about metas and whether we like it or not the current meta of Destiny 2 is very, very open to using whatever you want. It's not the most perfect meta we've ever had, but I think that it is probably one of the better metas we've had because I can get in there and I can throw on literally any archetype weapon and do well. I can throw on a lightweight pulse rifle, I can throw on a sidearm, a hand cannon, an auto rifle, insert whatever I want. I can use it and do well with it. And especially with the mixture of maps that we have, you can use some longer range weapons like scout rifles, high impact pulses, stuff like that. But also we have close range maps where submachine guns, sidearms, auto rifles, they all have a place. However, one of the concerns that I have with, you know, the upcoming metas is that it's taken Destiny, or Bungie rather, how many years to get to this point where we have a pretty balanced meta? And again, I'm not saying it's perfectly balanced. Yes, there are still outliers. SMGs, for example, are an outlier in the current meta, but they are not as much of an outlier as, say, 600 round per minute autos were a couple years ago in Destiny, or Mita Multi-Tool was when Destiny 2 first launched. Like, that's that's what I'm nervous about is these defined metas, not these kind of loose interpretation of metas, not these kind of, oh, you know, we have some, we have some meta options here. No, I mean a defined meta, a meta where if you're not using the meta choice, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage. And I am afraid that with these whole new rule sets and stuff, Bungie is going to start going through these motions again, where it's like, okay, you know, first, uh, let's say just auto rifles are once again, like the hard meta from range to to time to kill everything about auto rifles is meta you know and then okay well now we have to nerf auto rifles so they nerf auto rifles and then you know high impact pulse rifles take their place and so on and so forth like i don't want to be forced to use a high impact pulse rifle or a hand cannon an auto rifle to have a fair competition and of course it's taken bungie so many years to get to this point and we've been through so many metas with them shifting the entire way that the the sandbox is 
I'm worried that we're gonna have that come back. But also on the notes of defined metas, uh, I do have a concern with hand cannons. And I addressed this a couple, couple months ago when we were talking about checkmate, but the hand cannon time to kill is unchanged. That's not really a big issue because all the other weapons had their had their times to kill relatively unchanged as long as you can hit crits. The problem that I see with hand cannons and you know this what what I'm referring to define metas is hand cannons ha are literally unchanged. You have to get 3 crits to get its maximum time to kill. In this upcoming sandbox, it's going to be 3 crits. Every other weapon type had their not their time to kill change, but their ease of kills changed. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that, a little bit more about forgiveness here in just a second. But hand cannons, you can still peak shot with them. And now with auto rifles, for example, that you have to hit your crits, especially like say a 720 or a 600 round, 600 round per minute auto rifle, it's going to be much more difficult to hit those crits. It's going to much be much more difficult to land that optimal time to kill because there are so many weapons in Destiny 2 that rely on forgiveness, that body shot to crit ratio forgiveness. And right now the way i'm looking at hand cannons are about to become that defined meta now i'm sure at some point bungie will address them and i know that bungie is taking steps to make sure that hand cannons are not too op or not you know hopefully not meta you know they're they're reducing body shot damage which is a good thing they're reducing the flinch that hand cannons deal they're reducing the flinch that uh, explosive payload deals so hopefully these changes will kind of offset hand cannons but hand cannons they still have their peak shot ability and that's one of the things that bungie actually addressed specifically in their in their post was you know the hand cannon peak shot potential leaves a high skill gap between players even though i know you could probably say oh it's not hard or it's not skillful to just walk around a corner take a shot and walk back but that's the way bungie puts it but on this same note of defined metas something that really concerns me and this this the crit shot ratio that's now changing Weapons like lightweight pulse rifles and aggressive sidearms are going to get absolutely nuked in this update. Aggressive, uh, lightweight pulse rifles, for example, the optimal TTK for lightweight pulse rifles is, what is it, seven crits, two bodies. With that changing, you now are going to have, or with the uh, health of guardians changing, I should say, with the health of guardians changing, you're now going to have to land all crits with a lightweight pulse rifle. And lightweight pulse rifles are not really known for their wonderful stability or their great accuracy or anything like that. Same thing with aggressive sidearms. Like aggressive sidearms, they have a decent time to kill, but that time to kill is reliant on body shots. When you increase precision damage and not body shot damage, you are automatically making these weapons more difficult to use, which is going to push them out of the meta. Why would I use a lightweight pulse rifle? Even in this current, in the current sandbox that we have, why would I use a lightweight pulse rifle? Like it has a slow TTK. Well, the reason I might use it is because it's a forgiving TTK or maybe something like a, um, uh, what is it? Um, adaptive pulse rifle, a 390 pulse rifle, kind of the same principle. But when you're increasing, you say you have to land all of your crits now it makes them much more difficult to use so you're going to see whole archetypes of weapons just pushed out of the way and no longer used because you have to be more accurate and i think that that's that's going to be a problem once we get into the like once we get into the sandbox uh and start testing things out because again you know we're talking about these defined metas when you're removing entire archetypes of weapons from viability because they you know because they rely on that forgiveness that is now no longer there you're just tightening the requirements of weapon or the required archetypes to use so that's a big concern that i have is is that weapons that rely on forgiveness are going to be just pushed out of the meta and no longer be viable uh, but moving on from there my next issue is with special ammo and the special ammo problem that i have so first of all i want to precursor this by saying i really like the special ammo changes i like this now they have the meter so you have to actually do stuff and you have to actually contribute to the game in order to get special ammo the problem that i have is that what may happen is a rich get uh, rich get richer situation you've got players who are really really good in destiny 2 that can you know they can really they can, get, they can slay out they can get lots of kills they can you know get assists uh they'll die occasionally they can cap flags all that stuff you're gonna have players like that who are high skilled getting more and more points which is going to give them more and more ammo and having more special ammo especially on things like shotguns and fusion rifles or if you're a crack shot you can be a, you know on a sniper or like cloud strike or something you're gonna have situations where 
good players are going to get more kills and they're going to get more special and they're going to prevent enemies from getting as much special. And that's, again, this is this is what I'm not entirely sure. Again, this is just kind of a concern that I have. We'll have to actually play it out and see how it works. But I do have a worry that, you know, the rich get richer with a special ammo situation is going to be present. Now, of course, Bungie has taken measures to prevent this from happening, which I think is fantastic. For, exa uh, for example, special ammo and heavy ammo kills will not count towards that special meter. Like, I definitely think that's a good thing because that would definitely allow for steamrolling if they allowed special and heavy weapons to count towards that special ammo meter but they're not doing that so i think that that's a good a good thing but i still think that the high skill players are going to be sitting on a lot of heavy and that's going to be lowering uh low skill players like you're, you're gonna get into a point in the game where really high skill players are going to have just an abundance of special ammo lots of shotgun shots or fusion or sniper or whatever and again when you're up against a special weapon a lot of times it feels like there's nothing you can do like if you're if somebody's charging you down with a shotgun even if you have a you know 300 round from the side or with the fastest base ttk in the game you're still probably going to get killed by that shotgun because it still takes that 0.6 seconds even at four crits which you know again hitting four crits very very difficult it's going to be you know it's going to be problematic but with that being said, next thing I wanted to talk about, um, and this is a more, this is not so specific. This is just kind of a thought that I had. Um, sniper rifles, currently adaptive frames and high impact frames can one shot supers. With the changes that are coming to the game and the increase in health, I don't know if adaptive frame sniper rifles are going to be able to one shot supers. And that is making me wonder like how, like how it's gonna play out in the meta. Of course, supers are not, like they're they're getting a, a longer cooldown now which i think is a good thing as well but at the same time if you're taking out options to counter a super i feel like that could present a problem again this is not like uh, this is i know i said this is not in any particular order but this would be kind of one of the last or lowest concerns that i have but you're taking away sniper's ability to one shot supers or a lot of sniper's ability to one shot super not all snipers but you're taking a lot of sniper's ability to one shot a super out of the game so it just it, it kind of makes me wonder like you know what's what's going to happen and of course if a super still has really low resilience something like a, a silk strike hunter for example with low resilience you're probably still gonna be able to one shot kill them with an adaptive sniper but and just a, just a thought there but i think that's kind of it that's all the the concerns that i have again we don't know how these are going to actually play out in the game until we have our hands on it so all of these they are literally just opinionated concerns that i have but i want to hear your thoughts on them like you know i've thought about these overnight and i do like they are genuine worries so tell me what you think about them do you think that any of these are problematic or do you think that bungie is going to do a pretty decent job of handling these uh, scenarios but yeah with that being said of course drop a like if you enjoyed the video subscribe for more daily destiny content and do me a favor watch the videos you see here on the end screen because for whatever reason youtube thinks you'll like them guys i'll see y'all next time bye for now